You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. So amazing. You cause the sun, the sun and moon to shine. I'm so glad you're mine. Oh, I'm glad to say you're mine. To join us.
that the world will come to know who he is.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Too late. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Uh, is there a Sister Diane Hooker here? Is Diane Hooker in the sanctuary? Ma'am, can you meet me around back, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, choir, let's say Jesus. Jesus, you been good to me. We 
gonna really sing. I love to sing. <laughs> Each and every night. Yes, Sometimes this old voice just won't act right. Listen yes, to Sing, sing this old song. Sometimes it's a voice, it's just won't act right. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep on singing so the world will see. Yes, sir. When we make it to heaven, we're gonna sing in perfect harmony. This is just a rehearsal. Jonathan Phillips and that selection by the milk courts. Praise our God. He is worthy. Good morning, Mount Olive. My name is Sonia Holland, and I received the Right Hand of Fellowship in February. After attending a couple Sundays, I noticed that all the new members were being asked to offer the welcome, the scripture, and the prayer. So I thought to myself, hmm. How can I remove myself from the rotation? <laughs> so I thought I figured it out. I had surgery on my foot that bought me two Sundays. We went on vacation that bought me another Sunday. And so when I got back, I said, there have been so many new members. Surely they have forgotten about little old me. <laughs> Wrong. They tag teamed me in the banquet hall about three weeks ago. I thought about it and I said, hmm, this is probably how Jonah felt, but we all know the moral of his story. You can run, 
but you can't hide. So here I am. <laughs> but in all honesty, I think this is a great way for the congregation to get to know the new members and to put a name with the face. So I have to give thanks and gratitude to Sister Tina Williams and also to Deacon Prince Howard for this opportunity to stand before you on today. Today's scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, it is once again that we come before you to say thanks. You've allowed us to see another beautiful Sunday morning, and we're grateful for this blessing. I lift up all those who stand in the shoes of John on this morning. Father, I pray that you would give them a message from on high that they may share with their congregations. We thank you for our pastor, who is a dynamic preacher, teacher, and shepherd. I pray that you will continue to order his footsteps as he continues to be on fire for you and the kingdom building effort. We ask that you would also continue to cover Lady Paris and their family as well. I truly believe that you have great things planned for Mount Olive Baptist Church. We thank you for the basics in life, eyes to see, a tongue and a mouth to talk, ears to hear and listen. We thank you for waking us up in our right mind and with a reasonable portion of health and strength. What an awesome God we serve. We thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. For without it, I don't know where we would be. We're grateful that you don't treat us as our sins deserve. You're all-seeing, all-powerful, and all-knowing. There's nothing that happens here on earth that surprises you. You are capable of far more than we can ever think or imagine. Lord, we thank you for your book of nature and your book of life. You spoke and things came into being. You are a mighty God. Although you gave us free will, you knew that we would need help. And so you had it written down and you left your word for us. All we have to do is pick it up, open it, and read it for ourselves to find out what thus saith the Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. He knew that he was born to die, but he came down to earth anyway. He put on a robe of flesh and walked among men. He led by example, and he did not sin while he was here. He performed many miracles as well. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane three times to ask that the cup be taken from him, but he knew that the prophecies had to be fulfilled, and so he went to Calvary. He died a horrible death, and he had done no wrong. He was innocent of all charges. He died for our sins and transgressions. He died so that we might live. And although we know we can never repay the debt, I believe that the least we can do is to believe and try to live our lives in a manner that is pleasing to him. Holy Spirit, thank you for indwelling within us. We thank you for your groanings and your utterings when we don't know what to pray for. We serve a triune God, and I'm glad about it on today. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, Father, We've all sinned and fallen short of your glory, and we're sorry. We lift up our missionaries, Father, for they have elected to take up their cross and follow you. I pray that whomever they come into contact with on today will at least lend a listening ear to their story, to their testimony, to the good news. I pray that a seed would be planted or one watered, or perhaps there is one whose conscience would be pricked by the Holy Spirit, and they are ready to turn their lives over to you. It's so much better to know you before we meet you. 
We ask that you would comfort those who are grieving on today, Father. I pray that you would soothe their souls, Father. Carry them if need be. I pray that they may be comforted somewhat by the fond memories that they share of their loved one. Go by the hospitals on today, Father. Be with the sick and shut in. I pray that you would touch and heal in a mighty way, like only you can. I ask that you would cover the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, and all those who are on the front lines on a daily basis. I lift up our troops on this morning, Father, for they have been deployed to the far reaches of the earth. I pray that you would wrap your arms around them, keep them safe, strengthen and encourage their family members and loved ones who have been left behind. I lift up our world leaders on today, Father. I pray that you would help them to make the, the decisions that are best for those that they govern and they would not just seek individual profit or gain. I pray that you would touch the hearts and minds of those who seek to harm others. Let them know that there are other nonviolent ways to get their points across. If we could just learn to love one another, what a better world this would be. You are worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise at all times. We magnify your name. These and all other blessings we ask in the precious and matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ, and all those who love the Lord said, amen. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning, Mount Olive. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I bring greetings. My name is Justin Phillips. I am doing today's welcome. So uh, may all first time visitors please stand and remain standing until you receive a token of love from our hospitality ministry. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. On behalf of Mount Olive and our pastor, uh, Pastor Jonathan, I wear uh, Eric Jorans in the pulpit, Wilkins, and our beautiful and vivacious First Lady, Paris, and the entire Mount Olive congregation. We welcome you and we hope you enjoy the service. Kick back and relax. It's going to be a great time. Thank you.
sair com tinha valor. This morning, Mount Olive family and friends, we have a special treat for you this morning. It is our pleasure to share with you some highlights from the induction ceremony of the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers at, Mount, at Morehouse College. There will be extended footage shared later, but at this time, we ask you to please pay attention to the screens and congratulations, Pastor Wilkins. Come on, put those hands together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house.
I am uh, overjoyed this morning at the goodness of our God. How many of you are thankful to be in the house of the Lord one more time? My assistant pastor right there. I um, I cannot tell you how full my heart is um, to have been inducted in uh, the school's largest class of inductees. Um, I'd like to take a moment just to to thank God and share a couple of thoughts. You know, it's it's amazing how God will uh, bring your life full circle and to go back to a place where where I had a whole host of dreams and then to come back with some of those dreams fulfilled with my beautiful bride and our family and then to look out and see five full rows of Mount Olive Baptist Church members <laughs> travel down to share in this monumental moment with us. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And I, I just want to share with somebody who perhaps you're here and you have felt like your life is just a little bit behind. Can I just tell you that we serve an on-time God? Old folk used to say, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And so I, I, I greet you with a heart that is full and um, fully committed to serving for the rest of my days, the Lord Jesus Christ and his people. Again, give yourself a round of applause, Mount Alaba. I'm grateful to serve the greatest church on the planet. Uh, to all of our visitors, if you're a visitor for the first time, would you just stand? I'd like to see you one more time. Let me see you, pearly whites. So glad to have you. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We're honored. We're honored. Thank you so much. So good to see you. We're honored to have you here with us in service. We promise not to hold you long, but we just want to take a moment. Somebody just do me a favor and high five the person next to you. Tell them it's good to see you. High five our visitors. Say it's good to see you. Look wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome with your, your cute self. So glad to have you in the house of the Lord. We greet you with the love of Jesus Christ on our hearts. A couple of quick announcements. We will have uh, a leadership conference um, and the theme is choosing the towel over the title. Choosing the towel over the title. I wanna invite you, those of you who are able uh, to take off on Friday, May 3rd. We'll be here all day from nine to five, May 3rd, and then uh, half a day, May 4th. I wanna challenge those of you who feel called uh, to serve in leadership, maybe you're already serving in leadership, to come out and to hear more of what God is doing. Uh, you don't have to have a title to feel called to serve. Amen. I want to challenge those of you who are new to the fold, perhaps those of you who have been here for a while, but you've been on the fence for whatever of a reason. I want to challenge you to meet us as we promise to take good care of your time. There is a wonderful seminar next Saturday, April 20th. Uh, sponsored by a Deacon Maston. It is entitled, How Money Works. Somebody, somebody, how many of you know you, you could always use a little bit more information about how money works? And so we're excited to host that with Deacon Maston for April 20th at 10 a.m. right here at the Mount Olive Baptist Church. For those of you who are students who, who require some tutor, tutoring services, let me be the first to tell you, uh, some of us all, so, some of us can testify that we've benefited from private help, amen, from tutoring. And so if you'd like to get some tutoring, is Deacon Phillips here? Deacon Phillips right here. If you need some tutoring with school, feel free to avail yourselves to that. I'm excited about God's word. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord today? I believe God is going to speak to our hearts today. And if you'll pray 
uh, I'll preach today. Is this all right? Amen, amen. At this time, let us receive um, uh, the, the men's choir. Aren't they sound so wonderful today? <laughs> sound like the temptations. <laughs> Brother hit a couple notes. I said, wait a minute. Where are we at now? Where are we at? <laughs> let us receive them with another amen, and then I will come and bring the bread of life. We'll take offering after the altar call, if you don't mind. But I, I feel the Lord's help today. Amen. say amen again. I want to invite your attention to John the 19th chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture. John chapter 19 through the 29th verse. As you're standing, I want to take a brief moment to thank Deaconess Maria Farmer and Sister Thelma Barker and everyone who organized our trip to Atlanta, amen. You helped me celebrate. I see Deaconess Maria Farmer 
Sister Thelma, she here? No, we honor the Lord for both of you for organizing a trip where nobody went to jail. <laughs> no, nobody made the news in Atlanta. They all got back safe, amen. When you have the scripture, say, I got it. I'm going to read it in your hearing. It says, on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also named Didymus, which is twin. One of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So that the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. <clears throat> Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Church, say amen. amen. This is the word of God. Grass withers, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God will stand Forever. I'd like to preach from the subject. If you'll keep standing, I'm going to pray. A proof of life. A proof of life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we adore you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask, oh God, that you would come on in the room. Throw your weight around. Talk to everybody in here. Show the devil who's boss. Walk up and down every aisle, move up and down every pew until yokes are utterly destroyed and we all can sense the presence of the living God. We pray, God, for those who are here and those who are watching online. Talk to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 You may be seated. Proof. Of life. Uh, in his sermon, Sandy, the Reverend Sandy Ray, in a sermon titled A Voice in the Wilderness, offers an, an amazing account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One moment he describes when Jesus came, stood, at the mouth of the tomb. He said that Jesus, when he got there, made uh, some announcements. He said, first of all, uh, I've been busy the last couple of days. He said, I had to go through the lower region and I tied death and hell to my chariot wheel. He said, as I, as I walked through triumphantly through hell's gates, the imps cried right on conquering king said he came back to the tomb and he, he he said out loud oh death where is your sting oh grave 
Where is your victory? He said, I am he who was dead. But behold, I'm alive forevermore. The resurrection, my brothers and sisters, stands as the cornerstone of our faith. Jesus foretold the outcome of his death. Destroy this temple. And in a three days, I will raise it back up. Anybody know who I'm talking about? He fulfilled this promise and unveiled certain truths. First, the first principle is that death does not mark the end. That there is a future beyond this temporal existence. How many of you believe it? Secondly, no matter how far we have fallen or how deep we find ourselves in despair, the spirit of he who conquered death, hell, and the grave is able to lift us and breathe new life into our nostrils and into our souls. How many witnesses do I have this morning? John, the 20th chapter, verses 13 through 19 records this uh, initial appearance of Jesus to his disciples. On the day of his resurrection, they encounter him through this divine moment. This encounter wasn't just to relay the news of his triumph over death, but rather to solidify their witness through firsthand experience. For it is one thing to hear about Jesus. But it's something altogether different to know him for yourself. Jesus understood his disciples required more than just hearsay. He understood that his disciples required more than secondhand uh, information. But they, he knew that they needed an eyewitness account of his living presence. For where they were going and the church that they would build, they would need a real conviction and a fervent passion to spread the gospel to the far corners of the world. Jesus ensured this by offering proof of life. What is proof of life? Preacher, I'm glad you asked that question. Proof of life is evidence that is used to indicate that a victim is still alive. In a spiritual sense, Jesus was the victim of a heinous crucifixion on a mission to save a dying world. He died willingly, but he rose intentionally and began extending proof of life to encourage every single disciple on uh, the evening of the first day of the week the disciples gathered in secret shrouded in fear and uncertainty ten souls tucked away in an undisclosed location they sought solace from the relentless persecution that had claimed their beloved teacher the world had become hostile a hostile territory they were haunted no doubt by the memories of witnessing their Lord's brutal crucifixion. They were locked behind closed doors, yet there was one who knew exactly where they were. He understood their whereabouts, my brother. He understood their innermost thoughts, my sister. Suddenly, Jesus appeared among them in a moment of divine intervention the master came and stood among them defying the barriers bypassing locked doors and sidestepping human comprehension the psalmist declares where can I flee from your presence if I go up to the heavens you are there if I make my bed in hell you're also there too his presence, can you see him this morning? His presence, like a radiant 
beacon of hope penetrated the darkness of despair reminding them that even in the midst of dark dismal adversity God is able to be near and present and faithful to those who need him most he said peace be unto you this morning as they are bombing Jerusalem. I hear the Lord saying to all of us, peace be unto you. Conveying not just a greeting, but a profound hint at his divine work in his departure. He bequeathed to them his peace as an enduring legacy. But in and in his sacrificial death, he secured peace for all of our souls. And in his boundless love, he breathed life into their very beings. He is the son of the living God. He is the risen savior. He came and stood before them. Can I just pause right here and ask you, have you ever had the spirit of God come and meet you in your need? Have you ever had the Spirit of God come to remind you that you are not by yourself? Have you ever, just asking a question to my family, have you ever had the footsteps of God come on into your thoughts and tell you as crazy as a life is, I'm still by your side. I'm just as near to you as the air that's coming through your mouth. Extended his hands. Can you see his hands, Mount Olive? Playing the wounds of his undeniable truth in his resurrection. The scars etched in the forearms of his body. His glorified body served as proof of life. Not only did they witness his familiar countenance, but they heard his all too familiar voice. They beheld the unique marks of his suffering confirming his identity with open hands and open hearts. The exalted redeemer reveals himself to his faithful followers satisfying their senses and his undeniable reality. Their hearts are filled with joy at the sight of their Lord, wiping every tear from their eyes. He spoke again, peace be with you, and proceeded to commission them for ministry as the Father has sent me, I now send you. He declared entrusting them with a mission and in, 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 in host, hosting his endearing commission. In a profound gesture, he then breathes the breath of life on them, imparting his Holy Spirit. This divine breath symbolized not only his living presence, but also his spiritual life and power that they would receive from him, from him just as God had breathed life into Adam. Here is Jesus ushering in a new era through the breath that came from his own resurrected body. In a profound gesture, he breathed on them. Yet in the midst of all that is happening, in the midst of this transformative and miraculous moment, there is one who is notably absent. Scriptures recount that Thomas is missing. And it is surprising to me, maybe it's surprising to you considering the gravity of this occasion, one would think and assume that everyone would be eager to gather in the presence of the master, cherishing every vulnerable moment that they had with him. However, Thomas is one of the 12, now 11. And he is noticeably absent, missing out on the fellowship and the joy shared among his brothers. I'm sure they could hardly contain themselves when he finally showed up. Ain't that just like folk who have a whole lot of zeal to put it right in your face? How good God has been to you. How good God has been to them. 
It's a wonderful thing because when you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, nobody should be able to shut your testimony down. And when God has been good to you, and I mean real good to you, that should be something in your heart that wants to tell everybody. The old folk used to say, don't worry about my name. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. Don't worry about what my name is. There's only one name that matters. His name is Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Mighty Counselor. Everlasting Father. Y'all better come get me off this mic this morning. Yes, ma'am. Sure. <laughs> they could hardly contain it. When you've tasted him and you know him for yourself, when he's healed your body and put running in your feet, nobody should be able to shut you down. He said, we have seen him with our own eyes. Thomas wasn't having none of it. He was from Northern Virginia. <laughs> Reminds me <laughs> of that song from Oz. Don't nobody bring me. I don't believe what you're talking about. See, because that's the thing about pain and hurt. When you've lost somebody so near to you. Anybody ever lost somebody near and dear to you? When you've lost somebody near and dear to you, all, sometimes all your faith goes out the window for a moment. All those familiar scriptures. And, and the truth is, you don't want people who don't really know what pain is to roll up on you and say the wrong thing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Miss me with the scriptures for a moment. Miss me with your premature zeal for a moment. And let me sit in my anguish long enough for God to meet me. See, it's one thing for you to tell me. It's another thing for God to walk through the door. Sometimes. Sometimes it's just good to minister to, through your presence. And shut your mouth. Half the time we don't know what we're talking about anyway. Amen, lights. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Sometimes it's just good to just shut up and let God have his way. Sometimes we're doing so much and we can, if we're not careful, we will prematurely do something from a heart out of love that's premature and ill-timed. Yeah. Thomas wasn't having none of it. <laughs> Responds to them, unless I see, this is how I know he was from Northern Virginia. Unless I see with my own eyes and put my finger where the nails are or were, unless I put my hand in the side, I will not believe a skeptic. I mean, anybody know what a skeptic is? A skeptic is someone who approaches beliefs and claims and knowledge with a high degree of doubt. They will question the reliability of, of the source. They will demand <laughs> rigorous empirical evidence. And in most cases, be critical of every claim. They, they, they will not support it if it's not scientifically proven. It is, if there are no logical scientific principles, then this is, this is what Thomas was saying. I've been hurt too much for you to play games with me. And unless I see it with my own eyes, I refuse to believe it because I was there to see him die. And until I see the same one rise, I will not believe. Maybe Thomas has gotten a bad rap. Although our glimpses of Thomas are brief in nature, his character 
comes through consistent. You do know Thomas was an OG. John, the 11th chapter, verse 16, it points to the idea that when it was plain to everyone that Jesus' life was in danger, only Thomas spoke up and said, let us all go to and die with Jesus. He didn't hesitate. He didn't waver to offer himself up. Only Thomas said, I refuse to let my Savior die himself. Why? Because he had walked with God long enough to know that he was the Messiah. We don't know why Thomas was absent the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection. (coughs) But he was reluctant to believe that their witness for one reason or another. Can, can you blame Thomas for wanting the same experience the other disciples had? I for one can empathize having lost a loved one so near and dear. I could see the value in having and wanting to examine evidence rather than taking someone else's word. In some cases, I'm afraid that's what's wrong with our church today. We have taken someone else's, uh, we have taken what someone else has said about God without researching and searching scriptures for ourselves, seeking God on our own accord. It's one thing to know of Christ through Big Mama and Papa. It's another thing to know him for yourself. And for the stuff that you and I are facing, everything that we see on the news, we all need a resolution and a revelation of who Jesus is in this culture. For the stuff we are facing that we have never seen before, Lord knows we need a revelation of Christ. So Jesus does some uh, three things to erase and address the doubt the first thing is that that Jesus appears to Thomas in the midst of his doubt for eight days Thomas wrestled with doubt this wasn't just ordinary doubt it had grown stubborn transforming into a lifestyle that threatened to undermine his faith That's what stubborn doubt can do, especially when when it festers and erodes the foundations of our belief. However, after eight days, the disciples gathered again. This time he was there. And on this eighth day, Jesus personally appeared in, in his resurrection form to address his doubt directly. Doubt, my brothers and sisters, is a natural part of our human experience. Even for those of us who have walked closely with Jesus, Thomas often dubbed doubting Thomas openly expressed his skepticism upon hearing of Jesus' resurrection. It's important to note that doubt isn't always a sign of being wrong. Sometimes it indicates a thoughtful process of questioning and seeking answers to the mysteries of our world, as Spurgeon wisely said. Doubt is not always a sign that a man or woman is wrong. It may be a sign that he or she is actually thinking. We shouldn't suppress our doubts, but rather bring them to the Lord in prayer, using them as a catalyst for a deeper faith. Am I helping anybody today? Some individuals need to doubt first before they can believe fully. Like the disciples who initially questioned the resurrection story, some may find it hard to accept or believe. They may scrutinize the facts like Peter, seeking answers and clarity. If doubt, however, leads to sincere questions and those questions lead to sincere answers that are ultimately accepted, then doubt has served a beneficial purpose. Rather than allowing doubt to hinder our faith, we, let us all allow doubt to fuel our curiosity and drive us to seek the truth of God. Don't, don't doubt, you don't doubt God until you ask God for the help to find the answer. Doubt can be, can be a stepping stone toward a more robust and grounded faith. The second thing is that Jesus addressed Thomas with the proof of his wounds. In his interaction with Thomas, 
Jesus, Jesus doesn't dismiss or chastise Thomas's doubts. Instead, he invites Thomas to physically touch the wounds in his hands and in his side providing tangible evidence of his resurrection. This act speaks volumes about Jesus' deep compassion and understanding. He offers concrete proof that transcends doubt, encouraging us to encounter his presence in a deeply personal and tangible manner. Jesus' wounds become a powerful symbol of triumph over death, offering hope and assurance to all who seek him. Beloved, let us marvel at the boundless mercy of our Savior, Jesus. Jesus, in his infinite compassion, did not reject Thomas for his doubts. Instead, he met Thomas in the doubt and asked, invited Thomas to experience his resurrection. As A.W. Tozer beautifully expressed, the goodness of God is infinitely more wonderful than we will ever be able to comprehend. Jesus' mercy extends to each one of us, offering us the assurance and the evidence we need in moments of doubt and uncertainty. Lastly, Jesus transformed Thomas's doubt into faith for ministry. As we witness Thomas's profound transformation from doubt, to unwavering belief, we are reminded of Dr. King's powerful words. Faith is the strength by which a shattered world shall emerge into the light. Thomas, upon encountering the risen Savior, beholds his wounds and ascribes to him, My Lord and my God. His doubt is transformed into a resolute faith. Likewise, God meets us in our doubts to transform our doubt into a conviction that when we encounter a living Savior, we will then hold firm to what we have witnessed ourselves. For it possesses the transformative power to illuminate the dark recesses of our hearts. Thomas's encounter with the risen Christ marks a pivotal turning point. His skepticism and uncertainty are replaced with steadfast hope and steadfast belief. My Lord and my God. Can you hear him? Jesus not only addresses Thomas's doubts, but also equips him for the work of ministry. In the same way, encountering a living Christ has the potential to transform us, empowering us to bear witness to his resurrection and to share the hope we have in him with others. I come on to my conclusion. The narrative in Thomas, the narrative in this scripture about Thomas serves as a pointed testimony to God's unwavering faithfulness, even in moments of doubt and uncertainty. Just as Jesus met Thomas and transformed his doubts into unwavering faith, he extends the same invitation to you and yes me. Our doubts do not disqualify us from God's love and presence. Rather, they become a catalyst for a deeper faith and transformation. Similarly, as we encounter Jesus and experience the reality of his resurrection, our doubts are transformed into faith, our fears into courage, our weaknesses into strengths. We become living proof of God's transformative love, ready to soar and fulfill the purpose for which we were created. Beloved congregation, let us embrace the proof of life that Jesus offers to us. Just as Thomas found assurance and faith, we too can experience the transformative power of encountering the risen Savior. Let us not be ashamed of our doubts, but to bring them to Jesus, knowing that his mercy and his love are boundless. May we walk together in faith and walk together in love, believing in the reality of a resurrected Christ. And may his proof of life inspire us to live boldly for his glory. So I come on home now. In school, they had something called show and tell. 
It's where a student would bring something or someone meaningful to the class in order to highlight the special reality of that personal thing. Jesus engaged in what we might call a divine version of show and tell. He allowed Thomas to touch the wounds in his body and the wound in his side. He told Thomas, put your finger in the nail pinch. I want you to touch the texture of the wound in my hands. He told Thomas, now put your hand in my side where it pierced, where they pierced me until blood came streaming down. Then Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed me, but blessed are those who have not seen but have yet believed. Do I have any witnesses who have not seen but believed? Well, today I, I came to announce that it's a show and tell time. For all of the doubters in the room, I want you to hold your seat. But for those of us who may not have seen him, but know that he lives, I need you to make a little noise right here. I want to tell somebody that the Lord is in the room this morning. Sometimes we all need a little proof of life. I may not have ever seen him face to face, but I'm so glad this morning that I know him for myself. I've got a sneaky suspicion this morning that some other folk who are standing on their feet may not have seen him with their own eyes, but they know him for themselves the bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and we overcome by the word of our testimony for all those who can testify of his goodness i have a few questions for you today can i ask you a couple of questions do you know him this morning won't he turn your doubt into faith this morning won't he wipe the tears from your eyes? Won't he heal your body? Won't he put running in your feet? Won't he mend your broken heart? Won't he open doors for you? Won't he make a way out of... As the old folk used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my mind somebody ought to throw your head back and say thank you Jesus for being my everything thank you Jesus for opening doors for me thank you Jesus for coming to get me when I was in the depths of hell but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me now now safe love look at somebody say love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me Come on, just take a few moments to celebrate your God.
used to say. And I think it's appropriate for where we are. I don't know what the future holds. But I know who holds my future. I want to tell somebody, be not dismayed, whatever betimes, God will take care of you. No need to be afraid of tomorrow when God is holding your today. No need to be scared of death when there is a giver of life. You do know there is a life beyond the world we see today. And I don't know about you, but I want to see him just as he is. Do I have a witness in the building? I sense the presence of God in this place. If you would just stand to your feet all over this sanctuary. Here. My humble God. Sing it if you know it. your prayer do not pass do not pass listen I want to take a moment in this beautiful sanctuary to open the doors of our church this morning for someone who needs to give their life to the Lord maybe you are here this morning and you have not received the Lord in the pardon of your sins. You find yourself feeling estranged from God. I want to offer you a unique opportunity to come and give your life to Jesus. Maybe for the first time, maybe perhaps for the second time. If you're here under the sound of my voice, maybe you are saying, I, I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I'm here to tell you there's no greater decision that one could ever make than to give your life to Jesus. If you're here and you're saying, I want to recommit my life or I want to be baptized and identify with the death and the burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you're here and you've not given your life to the Lord or you're saying, I'm ready to be baptized, I want to recommit. This call is just for you. It's just for you. If you're here, just take a step out in the aisle and come and give your life to Jesus. Amen. If you're here and you're saying, I'm ready to recommit. I, I want to commit and connect with this church. I feel like this church is my home. I feel like this church is where I need to be. If that's you, if this call is for you, this invitation is for you, why don't you step out in the nearest aisle and come and be a part of our church. Amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Anybody else? Yeah, beautiful. Look at these brothers that have come. 
Say, is there one? Is there one? Is there another? Do not pass me by. Come on, sing it, sing it. Savior. favor just turn somebody next to you tell them are we waiting for you <laughs> are we waiting for you are you here I'm here to tell you there's no better place than you could be than right here with us we want to love on you we want to help you we want to shelter you but, but we're clear you got to make the first step amen so be, we waiting on you now Look at, look at somebody that's telling me, is he talking about you? I know, I, I know who you are, but does he know who you are? <laughs> Amen. Going once. <laughs> Amen. Going twice now. Going three times. Four. Let's celebrate these who have come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you again. God bless you again. So delighted to have you listen just a moment Deacon Phillips is going to take you in the back we're going to make sure we connect with you if you could just stay here I want to pray with you and some others who as we all open the altar for prayer this morning maybe you're here and you're just saying I, I, I have uh, some doubts in my own life that I want to pray over and with there's some things that pastor you don't even know about but that word was for me and I just need to bear witness uh, this morning and pray with some other folk who <coughs> Who can get a prayer through and sometimes you just need to stand with some family members and look to the Lord in prayer there's plenty of room here if you want to come and pray with us those of you watching online if you want to just stand where you are <coughs> if you got somebody there with you take their hand and we can look to God together in prayer standing because we don't want you to pass us by today we are standing in your path because we are in need of your presence so we have come some of us for more reasons than we can pronounce asking oh God that you would come by and see about us Thank you, God, for opening your schedule and your calendar <laughs> and allowing us an opportunity to come for this appointed time. God, we can't even begin to tell you all about what we are facing, but God, we know you know our innermost thoughts. You are clear about our concerns. You are not intimidated by our worries. And so we have come from all walks of life with all kinds of stuff just to bring it to you. Our doubts, 
our anxieties, our worries, our concerns, our issues. Oh God, we hand what we can't handle over to you. Have thine own way. <laughs> Have thine own way. Mold us. Mold our stuff. Make us into what you want us to turn into. Change our doubts into belief. <laughs> Change our doubts into belief. Transform our tests into testimonies. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, say, the great I am, the great counselor, the great companion, the, the, the great I am, you are everywhere. So I squeeze the hand I'm holding. God. You're God of this hand. You're God of this life. Come on, squeeze that hand a little tighter. God, take a hold of our lives. Take control of our living. Take it. Take it now. We need you, Lord, in our experience. We got some questions, Lord. We got some issues, Lord. We got some worries, Lord. But we turn from our test to the master himself and say Lord whatever you want to do with us however you want to bless us we will be satisfied any way you want to bless us we will be sweet Jesus I sense God right here lift your hands up come on lift them as high as you can Forget about anybody next to you and go for yourself. Go on and go for broke. God, I need you. My, my hands are lifted because my need is real. My hands are lifted because my need is for real. But in the midst of it all, I worship you. In the midst of it all, I thank you. With tears streaming down my face, I still got to thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. You know my end from my beginning. You know where I am and where I'm not. You know what I have and what I don't have. But God, I thank you that you're a God that anchors it all. You need, you see all, you, you know all. <laughs> you are wonderful. You are an everlasting God. You're the Prince of Peace. Yeah. In the middle of my storm, you're the Prince of Peace. In the middle of my confusion, you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you. <laughs> I know this prayer is going a little long, but I sense the Savior working in somebody's heart this morning. I sense the Savior moving in somebody's life this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah right here. Come on, say hallelujah right here. So God, we close this prayer just as we started it, saying, God, whatever you want to do, do it, Lord. And don't do it without us. And we'll be so prayerful and careful to give your name the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. So, somebody throw your head back and shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hook somebody next to you and tell them I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, my sister. The Lord is with you. All is well. All will be well. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Everything, every single solitary thing. God will give you strength. God will give you peace. God will give you joy. Unspeakable joy. I 
thing is good to me. Come on, you ought to get your offering together and sing it with me. Savior. Oh, yes. That's it. Some of you can think about where you were when he came to get you. That's it. My humble cry. thank you for your generosity as this moment is but a natural extension of our worship to God. We believe in, in tithes and offerings. We believe that when God blesses you, he blesses you to be a blessing to somebody else. I'm so glad to be a part of a church that does more doing than it does talking. We are committed not only to the word of God, but we are committed to the work of God. We have engaged in the act of feeding those who are hungry Week after week, we are engaged in uh, building young people through our fully furnished, fully operational daycare center. Right here at the Mount Olive Baptist Church, we have a child development center that is engaged in developing our young people. Your tithes and offerings go to support the ministry and the work of of our church. How many of you are seeing the benefits of your investment? Amen. It's through your faithful giving and generosity that we are able to do this work. And I cannot thank you enough for your generous support. Let us stand on our feet and rest in our hearts before the Lord to receive these tithes and offerings. If you would, stretch your hand towards these offerings as we lift them to God. Father, in the name of Jesus. We have given because you are a giver. All that we have, all that we hope to become is because you have given us more than we could ever give you. We thank you for these tithes and offerings that have been given this morning. I pray that you bless both gift and giver. Those who've given tangibly through dollars, those who have given online, electronically, I pray that you'd bless again both gift and giver, that there might be meat in your house and movement with your work. We thank you and honor you. Kind sir, do what you will with these tithes and offerings that there would be work that goes forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all of God's children say amen. All things come of thee, O Lord. Say amen. Listen, were you blessed today? Amen. Pray that you were blessed by the word and this worship experience. I want to challenge you. Are we getting ready to go now? It's 1130. We getting ready to get you out of here. Yeah, you can stand on your feet. Yeah, it's time to go now. Ain't that a beautiful thing where you can get in church and get out of church? Amen. How many of you were blessed again? Yeah. Somebody say, it's done already? Yeah. Then we done. <laughs> we want to challenge you as you go into 
uh, this week to make it your business to share this word with somebody. How many of you know somebody in doubt right now that could use this word? Just signify by raising your hand. I want to challenge you to make your way to our YouTube page and, and share this word with as many people as you can. You never know. And some people, you know, we real good about not showing it on our face. But you'd be surprised at how many people are actually hurting in their homes. I want to challenge you to be a blessing as you have been blessed to somebody else and just share this word with somebody who needs it. Raise your hand of strength this morning. If there are no other announcements today, um, we'll be on the prayer call this week. I'm excited about joining you again. And I just honor the Lord for your goodness and for his goodness and his mercy towards all of us. Father, we lift our hand of strength, not because we're stronger than you, but because we know we need you. I ask, oh God, that you be with every person, every single person, every married person. Bless our homes, God. Touch our finances. Bless our strategies. Help us to have insight on our problems so that we don't fail in our faith and that we would hold fast to an assured future that you have promised. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We will prosper in all things and we believe you are positioning us not for us to be in positions of power and be cute, but you're positioning us to be a blessing to somebody else. You can trust us with this next season. We honor you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Do me a favor and hug somebody next to you. Tell them I'm praying for you. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week.